Rather than dead in a vase, my favourite way to paint roses is outdoors. But I'll need to work fast before the light changes. So keep watching as I try to achieve a realistic result as quickly as possible. There's no time for any drawing, so I'm immediately going for the most intense colour that I see, which is in the middle of the rose that's facing me. I see this as a warm yellow green made with cadmium yellow, viridian and titanium white. The colour then gets gradually cooler and lighter as it moves towards the outsides of the petals. So I'm adjusting the green mixture by adding more white, yellow ochre and viridian. There's a list of the colours I'm using in the description. Painting flowers isn't like portraiture. So I don't need to copy every single petal with perfect accuracy for this to look like a rose. I'll be showing you how to deal with the petals later, but first it's much more important to capture the subtle shifts in colour. Between warm and cool, more intense colours and greyer, more neutral colours. Here I'm mixing a darker, more intense green made with cadmium yellow, viridian and yellow ochre, which I'm going to use to place a shadow under one of the light petals. Now I'm mixing a much cooler, greyer shadow colour made with titanium white, viridian and raw umber. I'm using this to carve out one of the light petals which I'm going to leave with the white background showing through. Next to the white panel, the colours appear darker than they're supposed to. You'll have to wait to see their correct value once I place the dark green leaves in the background. This is why I would normally start by toning my canvas with a coloured ground, because this would make it easier to judge how light or dark the colours need to be. But I've missed this step in order to save time. Here I'm mixing a pale grey violet colour made with titanium white, ultramarine, alizarin crimson and a small amount of yellow ochre. I'm then placing a few notes of this violet on some of the lighter petals. This is the same tonal value as the light greens and yellows. The subtle variation in colour will make the rose appear much more colourful and realistic. Next. I'm starting to place one or two of the smaller petals near the centre of the rose. Normally, when I start a painting, I will block in the whole subject, including the background, before I work on the small details. But the middle of this rose is going to be my main centre of interest. And because I've only got 90 minutes before the battery on my camera runs out, I want to get this area established as I don't know if I'll be able to finish the rest of the painting in time. Here I'm using a small soft haired brush to take some pure yellow ochre and I'm placing a couple of warm dark accents within some of the shadows under the small petals. Then here I'm going to use the cool green shadow colour to place a few more small shadows under some of the petals. There are many more petals than this, but I don't have time to paint them all. So I'm choosing to include only the most obvious details. And do you see how this is all it needs to make the rose appear lifelike? This brings me to the whole point of this video and the real secret to achieving realistic results in your paintings. Whenever we view an object or a scene in nature, our attention will automatically focus in on one small area of detail and everything else will go out of focus. We'll then move to the next small detail, then another and another and so on. But if we try to paint every detail that we see when we focus in on each small area separately, our painting isn't going to appear realistic because we never actually see everything everywhere in focus all at the same time. This is why all those hyper detailed photorealist paintings never appear truly lifelike. They always look graphical like an illustration. In addition to this, slavishly copying every minuscule detail from a photograph is a long and laborious process. So it certainly isn't the way to produce realistic paintings quickly. Instead, you only need to focus on the few essential details that you see when you view your subject as a whole, rather than in separate parts. 
and I'll be explaining how you do this shortly. But first, I'm carving out the outer edges of the petals with a dark green mixture made with raw umber, viridian and yellow ochre. And with the background colour placed on the canvas, the rose now appears as light as it's supposed to. Here, I'm just mapping out the other two roses. I'm then diluting the background colour with a few drops of solvent. Now I'm using a large fan brush to mass in the rest of the background. This will give me a transparent texture that looks quite similar to the foliage. This is why I prefer to paint flowers outside because I love the background the leaves make. Next, I'm using some paper towel to soften the edges between the other two roses and the background. I'm then going to use my palette knife to create a hard edge at the top of the rose that's facing me. Now I'm mixing a darker version of the violet colour made with alizarin crimson, ultramarine and white. This violet is a middle value in between the light petals and the background which I'm placing along the edges of some of the petals in order to soften them. Wherever I focus on the petals or the leaves in the background, their edges will appear hard. But just like the details, if I paint all the edges hard and in focus, my roses aren't going to appear realistic. So I only need to include some of the hardest, most prominent edges, and the rest I will soften to varying degrees. I'm now starting to block in the other two roses. These are facing away from me, so they're mainly in shadow. And I'm not going to include as much information, as I don't want them to distract from the main centre of interest. Though I am going to accent one or two of the petals on the rose at the top. I'm also indicating some of the other petals, but I'm keeping their edges really soft and the rose at the bottom I'm leaving with just a few rough brush strokes. Mainly, I'm thinking about all the different colours I can see. Warm and cool greens and a grey violet colour on the underside of some of the petals. Here, I'm using a mixture of viridian, raw umber and a small amount of alizarin crimson to place some dark shadows in amongst the leaves. Notice how all it needs is one or two of their edges indicating for the leaves to suddenly appear much more lifelike. This optical illusion of anchoring the viewer's attention with just a few hard edges and details is the key to achieving incredibly realistic results fast. It works because this is how we actually see things. We only ever focus on a few details at a time and everything else is out of focus. So first, we need to ignore all the details in order to simplify our subjects into larger underlying shapes of colour and tonal value. We then need to identify the main centres of interest and we draw the viewer's attention by placing a greater level of detail in just these areas. I'm now painting in some of the leaves with a warmer, more intense green made with yellow ochre, viridian and cadmium yellow. This is to add some more variation in colour to the background. Learning how to simplify our subjects and identify the main centres of interest isn't easy. We have to constantly battle our automatic tendency to focus in on every single small detail. It's pretty much guaranteed that we'll always start by putting down too much information, which we'll then need to remove. Here, I'm softening one of the leaves in the background, as there's now too many hard edges. Now, the best way I know of helping me decide the main centres of interest is by squinting at my subject. Then, as I gradually open my eyes, I will notice which edges and details pop first. But this still takes practice. The reason I'm able to finish this painting quickly is because I've painted the same kind of subject many times. So I know exactly what to look for. In fact, I had to paint this demo three times because the sun kept coming out and ruining the exposure. But whenever you see an artist who excels at a particular subject, whether it's flowers or architecture, it is because they figured out the best way to simplify that subject. 
and they know which details are essential in order to capture it. So watch this video next if you want to know one of the most important details you need to focus on in a portrait. I've been painting for an hour and a half and I need to stop now because the sun's coming out. So thank you for watching.